So Juan and I have been using Apple products for a very long time, but Isaac hasn't. And even he was excited about the new phone. So who better to talk about it than an enthusiastic young man like Isaac? As a hardcore Android user, I've been excited for this one to come out. And we finally have it. <laughs> Android. Hey, Android's not that bad. That's really not. I miss my Androids. This is Apple's newest, most game-changing, innovative- Okay, okay, just get on with it. <laughs> Anyways, lots of things were released recently, and there are many new features that came with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Let's go over the best additions and biggest changes to the phone. So in the box we have, um, the phone. The phone. And the cable. It came with no stickers. Can you believe that? What's next? No box? A goodie bag? Womp <laughs> womp. <laughs> Let's talk about the most important thing when it comes to Apple, the battery life. You know Apple doesn't really have the best batteries, but apparently now it's up 6% compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, up to 33 hours of video playback, 29 hours streaming video, and 105 hours audio. So let's see later on if it's up to par with my 24 Ultra. Now before we get to the fun bits, let's talk about the GPU and CPU. The foundation. The A18 Pro chip is built using a second generation 3 nanometer process. So it is more efficient, faster than the A17 Pro Bionic chip using the iPhone 15 Pro models. And that was even great, but they went even better. The A18 Pro chip is capable of handling Apple intelligence tasks and it runs the Apple intelligence features in iOS 18. The A18 Pro CPU is up to 15% faster than A17 Pro CPU and it is able to deliver the same performance using 20% less power. The GPU is up to 20% faster than the GPU in the A17 Pro. The hardware accelerated ray tracing is two times faster for gaming improvements. The neural engine is also faster and more efficient. And Apple says that Apple Intelligence features run 15% faster on the A18 Pro than the A17 Pro. iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max have 8GB of RAM, the minimum needed for Apple Intelligence. Yeah, that's the minimum for this phone. But for the previous year, for the 24 Ultra, that has 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now I'm not here, you know, talk down the iPhone. The iPhone is great in my opinion, but I'm just, I'm just want to put that out there. As for storage, the iPhone 16 Pro starts with 128 gigabytes of storage, while the iPhone 16 Pro Max starts with 256 gigabytes. Both can be upgraded to a maximum of one terabyte of storage. Now, I think that's a bit overkill. The Dynamic Island includes a true depth camera sensor for face ID and a front facing camera. The display has a small circular cutout on the right side that's for the camera and a pill shaped cutout for the left side for the true depth system for face ID. Apple turned Dynamic Island into a part of the iPhone's interface and it uses a front and center information hub for notifications and other at a glance information from apps and services. When you make an Apple Pay payment for example, Dynamic Island expands to a square shape to confirm your face ID scan. And when on a phone call, it expands so you have phone controls at your fingertips. The Dynamic Island can display everything from map directions to Apple Music and it integrates with live activities. There are no changes to the Dynamic Island with the iPhone 16 Pro models. And remember, within the island is your camera. The iPhone 16 Pro models continue to use Face ID, Apple's facial recognition system. Face ID is baked into the Dynamic Island. Face ID is used across iOS for unlocking the iPhone, allowing access to passcode protected apps, confirming app purchases, authenticating Apple Pay payments, and more. Face ID works through a set of sensors and cameras. A dot projector projects tens of thousands of invisible infrared dots onto the surface of the skin to create a 3D facial scan that maps the curves and planes of each face with the scan read by an infrared camera. The facial depth map is related to the A18 Pro chip where it is transformed into a mathematical model that the iPhone uses to authenticate identity. Face ID works in low light and in the dark and with hats, beards, glasses, sunglasses, scarves, masks, and other accessories that partially obscure the face and it's still using the same 12 megapixel front facing camera as previous generations. This camera supports night mode, smart HDR 5 integration, Dolby Vision HDR recording, deep fusion to bring out fine details, a phototonic engine that improves low light performance, and a portrait feature that lets you take images and turn them into portrait shots later. Now I know what you're waiting for is the action button, but give me a second, I'm almost there. For display, both models still feature a Super Retina XDR OLED display with the Dynamic Island. The iPhone 16 Pro has a resolution of 2868 by 1230 with 460 pixels per inch, while the iPhone 16 Plus has a resolution of 2622 by 1206 with 460 ppi. Apple says the iPhone 16 Pro models can reach 2000 nits peak brightness outdoors. 
for the 16 Pro Max, the lowest nits is now 1, which will definitely help with the always on display. There is a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio. To be honest, I have no clue what that means. <laughs> it has something to do with true to life colors and true tone displays and things like that, so pretty much colors. <laughs> There's also a fingerprint resistant oleophobic coating for support for haptic touch, which provides haptic feedback when interacting with the display. The iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max support 120Hz ProMotion refresh rate and have always on display, features that are not available in the standard iPhone 16 Pro models. 120Hz maximum refresh rates allow for smoother scrolling when viewing web pages and improvements for video, while the always on display leaves the time notifications and some widgets visible when the iPhone is locked. Now the biggest addition you're waiting for me to talk about is the new action button. Anyways, the new action button can do a lot of things, but its main feature is using it for the camera. While in camera mode, it can activate or deactivate a focus mode. It can also take a picture, a selfie, a video, portrait, or portrait selfie. You can also make it to turn a flashlight on or off. With this one button, you can use it for a focus when you're on the camera, for zoom in or different settings. You can also map it for flashlight, voice memos, shortcuts, silent mode, translate, accessibility, and more. And within accessibility, there's a lot more things you can do with it. On the next video, we will be more into depth with the camera and what it can do. But for now, I can tell you that this is a new feature that can go in 4K at 120 frames per second. That's insane. That's new on the phone. And that's huge for Apple. They also feature post and real-time editing for color grading and audio. In our next video, we will go into the depth with the camera, like water depth, and see all it has to offer and why it was a huge reason for me to buy it. So thanks again for watching. I'm Isaac. See you next time.